Hello everyone, this is Manu Parimi, an Applications Engineer at Plexim. Welcome to the Plex Model of the Month video series. In this video, I will demonstrate the design and control of a high step up transformerless inverter for AC module applications with active power decoupling. The featured Plex model has been designed by Dr. Jinia Roy during her studies at Arizona State University. Hello everyone, this is Jinia Roy. I am a researcher at National Renewable Energy Lab, NREL, in Power System Engineering Center. Before joining NREL, I completed my PhD from Arizona State University, where I worked with Professor Raja Einer on the development of wideband gap device-based power electronics interfaces for renewable energy applications. One of the contributions involved development and demonstration of high power density transformerless microinverter with gallium nitride devices addressing all the issues commonly faced by the PV inverters. For this work, we also received Best Paper Presentation Award by the Technical Committee of IEEE Applied Power Electronics Conference, EPIC, in March 2017. We would like to thank Plexim for featuring our converter in Model of the Month series. The model developed by Jinia and their team implements a two-stage converter for a transformerless microinverter with the converter specifications as displayed. They developed a Plex model to design and verify the circuit operation. Here is their Plex schematic. The topology comprises two stages. The first stage is a non-isolated high-gain DC-DC stage implemented using an extended duty ratio boost converter. This steps up the voltage from a single PV module of 20 volts DC to 190 volts DC. The second stage, the DC-AC stage, implemented using a doubly grounded voltage swing inverter, first boosts the 190 volts DC to 380 volts DC, then converts this higher DC voltage to AC grid voltage. A typical transformerless microinverter design faces three main challenges. The first challenge is to support the double line frequency ripple power without employing bulky and less reliable electrolytic capacitors also known as ECAPs. This ripple power is the difference between the instantaneous grid injected power and the constant DC power from the PV panels, necessitating the use of large filters in conventional topologies. The second challenge is to eliminate the capacitive coupled PV ground current. There is a significant parasitic capacitance between the positive and the negative PV terminals to the frame and hence to the ground. When the positive and or the negative terminals are connected to a switching node of the inverter with respect to the ground, it can lead to significant common mode ground currents through these parasitic capacitances. The third challenge is a high gain boost requirement. This is a unique requirement for a transformerless microinverter as it is connected across a PV panel with an output voltage of only 20 to 40 volts. But since this is interfaced to a 120 or a 240 volt grid, a large voltage gain is required. Genia's proposed topology addresses all three of these issues. To tackle the high gain boost requirement, the DC-DC stage is implemented using a three-phase extended duty ratio boost converter. This is a hybrid of an interleaved boost and a switched capacitor concept. The converter can deliver a high voltage gain with a gain region directly proportional to the total number of phases. Considering the trade-off between complexity and system efficiency, a three-phase circuit interleaved by 120 degrees is used here. Next, to eliminate the need for ECAPs in the converter, an active power decoupling technique is employed. This technique is generally used to deal with the inherent double line frequency ripple power. There are several ways to realize active power decoupling. In this model, the 120 Hz voltage ripple on both the DC link capacitors of the DC AC stage is increased. Therefore, the capacitance required, which is inversely proportional to the voltage ripple, is minimized. This allows 
for the replacement of ECAPs with highly reliable film capacitors. The DC-AC stage is implemented using a doubly grounded voltage swing inverter. This inverter is a hybrid combination of a synchronous boost converter and a half bridge inverter. The output of the DC-DC stage is both the first DC link VDC1 as well as the input of the DC-AC stage. VDC1 has a large 120Hz voltage swing which partially addresses the power decoupling. But the main decoupling comes from the voltage swing of the second DC link VDC2. The synchronous boost converter stage boosts the DC voltage from 190 volts at VDC1 to 380 volts at VDC2 as it is advantageous to perform decoupling at a higher DC voltage. Finally, the capacitive coupled PV ground current is eliminated by connecting the grid neutral of the half bridge inverter directly to the PV negative terminal. This is known as a doubly grounded structure. Now, let's look at the controller implementation. There are four different proportional integral or PI regulators that control the microinverter in three stages. The first stage, which is the front end DC DC stage, is controlled such that there is no double line frequency ripple on the input voltage to secure high MPPT efficiency. The second stage controls the mean value of the first DC link voltage VDC1. And the third stage has two loops. The outer DC link voltage loop controls the second DC link VDC2 and gives a current reference to the inner current controller. To mitigate the effect of double line frequency component in the current reference, a third order Butterworth filter with a cutoff frequency of 10 Hz is implemented. Let's run the simulation and observe the results in steady state. This scope shows the waveforms of all the capacitor voltages. By viewing the Fourier spectrum for a base frequency of 120 Hz, it can be noticed that all the capacitor voltages, except for the input voltage, have a relatively large 120 Hz component. The waveforms of the input current Scaled grid voltage and grid current here show a stable operation of the microinverter in grid connected mode. Once the circuit design was optimized and verified, Jinia and her team used the Plex thermal modeling domain for verifying the efficiency of their GAN switching devices as well as the diodes. They then built a hardware prototype of a 300 watt GAN based converter shown here. For more information on the inductor design, decoupling capacitance optimization and other design parameters, we invite you to explore Genia's paper available on the IEEE website. I hope you enjoyed this video on a high step up transformerless inverter modeled in Plex. Our next model of the month video could feature your model. If you have a Plex model you are willing to share, send it to info at plexim.com with a description of the power stage and controller. If your model gets picked, we will make a video of it and post it to our LinkedIn and YouTube pages while publicly crediting your work. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thank you for watching.